welcome once again to another edition of India Today, India Tomorrow, this special show that brings together families across generations to bring you a slice of life. And today we are joined by a very special family pairing. We're joined by actor, director Nandita Das and her father, the renowned painter, sculptor, muralist Jatin Das. Appreciate both of you joining us here. I must tell you that when I told a friend that I'm bringing the two of you together, I was told, expect fireworks. <laughs> I don't know what that meant, but Nadita, you want to make the sense of that? Is this a turbulent father-daughter relationship? I think like a, any parent-child relationship, we do argue a lot. We speak almost over each other. So I don't know how that's going to pan out on Zoom with all the lag. But it's mostly out of love and concern and worry for each other. It's more like, Baba, did you do this? Did you eat on time? And he's telling me, oh, it's raining in Bombay. Have you got your supplies? And so it's much of the argument is about from over care. We could both do a little less, but you know, that's how we are. But the, 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 the I would reason, call it turbulent. Uh, you would call it turbulent. The reason I'm asking you this is because I saw an interview of yours where you seem to suggest that your father was Manto-esque, almost a reference to your film on the famous <laughs> Pakistani short story writer, against whom his critics would say he was eccentric, mercurial, could be very rude at times, even offensive and obnoxious. Surely your father is not a Manto-esque in that sense, or is he? <laughs> Yeah, well, he's very, very Manto-esque. And I have, in fact, written about it in my book, Manto and I. Um, even at the premiere in Cannes, where my father was there, I said, you know, this is really, uh, my father is very Manto-esque. And in many, many ways, including being blunt to a fault, uh, you know, he could, he could piss people off with his uh, honesty and his bluntness. Um, like Manto has never cared uh, about money, hasn't been in the market, like you know, art is a market. At that time, Manto was not part of the Progressive Writers Association, even though he was one of the most progressive writers. And Rajdeep, I take slight offense in calling Manto a Pakistani writer. He spent three fourths of his life in India. So I would say he's one writer who should not be divided on the basis of religion or nationality. Fair enough, subcontinental writer. A subcontinental yes. <laughs> pleasure is the way to call him. But uh, uh, Jatin Das, uh, am I right to say you have a turbulent relationship with your daughter? Should I use the word difficult? Is there a generation <laughs> gap? Because I read again that you said growing up, you would discuss life with your daughter, not art as much as life. Explain that. Uh, these days, everybody use very strong words, turbulence, you know, etc. But um, when the children grow up, they govern you, they dictate to you. And uh, in the ancient time, they used to say, when a child becomes 16, he should become a friend of yours. So likewise, but uh, unfortunately, my children live away from home. My daughter is in Bombay, my eldest son is somewhere else in Delhi. So it's all talking on the telephone and meeting once in a while. So telephone is a very uh, big frustration, you know. Actual meeting, actual staying together is a different quality of life. Good times. So that, that apart, uh, Baba. Physical distancing is the yeah, buzzword um, at the moment. Uh, yeah, when Nandita says it's Montoish, I don't want to be like anybody. I'm just like myself. I don't frankly think of myself, what I am, uh, what is my personality, etc. I don't think of myself. But uh, that is her interpretation and she's free to do that. Uh, because, you know, I think there is this perception, yeah. Jatinda, from the outside, yeah, yes. that creative people are difficult to live with. You know, and then when you have so many creative people in one household, it can get even more difficult. That creative people, by their very nature, uh, are not easy to get along with. Is that uh, true, Jaginda? Frankly, today, in our society, in our political arena, in our society, in our family, there is frankly no proper understanding of creativity or an artist. When I was growing up in Orissa in Mayurfanj, a old princely state with a lot of cultural bearing. I wanted to study art, but my elder brother and parents pushed me to do inter science to go for medicine, which I left 
uh, intestines halfway went for art. But um, till today, I don't think, uh, frankly, in the earlier time, people had respect for an artist. Today, uh, an, a creative person uh, has to uh, uh, have a name and a fame and money. But that's nothing to do with creativity. So the whole journey, the whole understanding of artist and creativity has gone a different path. It's interesting you're saying that because Nandita also, in a way, is seen as an actor, Nandita, who's tried to break from the stereotype. Uh, you try to sort of carve a niche for yourself outside a Hindi film industry, where I guess commerce dominates. How do you actually create those spaces? A big challenge today, as much as it will be possibly tomorrow, as it was yesterday. You know, creating those spaces, Nandita, can't be easy. Uh, where you say, "Look, I'm away from this world of commerce of the Hindi film industry." Actually, it's not that difficult, and I think that is what my father was also alluding to when he said that, "You know, I don't want to be compared." but I don't even think about myself. So you don't think of creating a space or a niche or whatever. You just go with your conviction. You do what speaks to you. For instance, in my case, I did the films that resonated with me in terms of the story. I, I'm still a hesitant actor. I don't see myself as a film person, even though that's the perception because that's the work which is more in public domain. So um, I, I think th there was no war within that, oh, I have to stay away. I wasn't trying to resist temptation. It's like, uh, you know, if you, if you tell a vegetarian that that dumb biryani is amazing, this mutton biryani or a fish tikka, the vegetarian is not going to be tempted. So I had, uh, I wasn't trying to resist the money or the fame. It just, it, I didn't grow up seeing mainstream cinema. My parents never took me to films. And uh, so it came quite naturally, the kind of work I have done. It also had impact not only of my family, but also my social work days, which is really my background. Uh, I did my master's in social work, and then I was working with NGOs. And I literally, it was an accident that I did fire and thereon did more films. And because I've heard that your father was resistant to the idea of you going into the big bad world of the Mumbai film industry. Here is someone who himself yes. went to, you know, broke with type, as he says, uh, from inter-science, went to JJ School of Arts, but didn't want his daughter to enter cinema. Exactly. The Why? father. Well, I mean, that's, that's the argument. That's what I told him. I said, you know, you have always done what you believed in and uh, what you wanted to do without really worrying about whether it's the right, like, whether it's the thing to be done, whether your family is agreeing or not. So initially, I think he was just worried. And I now see the point over the years that it is a kind of a slippery slope. He would say, you will lose your moral compass. And, you know, it's very enticing and all the things that, in a way, Bollywood, the glitz, represents. Uh, but I hope that after 24 years since I've done Fire, he doesn't think that I lost my path. So hopefully now he's, he should be all right. Jadita, <laughs> is that true? A, you did not take your children for uh, to see cinema when they were growing up. Then your daughter decides to sort of uh, tentatively move towards cinema and you <laughs> suggest she shouldn't. Are you finally, have you finally come to terms with the fact that Nandita Das is an actor and a filmmaker? No, when you use a word a mainstream, <laughs> mainstream also can be a middle path. I have never no. been in the middle path. <laughs> Nandita has not been in the middle path. With, uh, uh, she does and I do with our individual conviction and commitment. And likewise, there are many artists and dancer or musician uh, though have committed to their journey. They are not in the mainstream, they are not in the middle path, they are not compromising. Uh, so there is a general understanding uh, uh, of an artist which is very vague. Somebody comes to my studio and says, your studio is very clean because they have a notion then artist studio will be messy and dirty and filthy. You know what I mean? <laughs> Likewise, Nandita doesn't have Not a PR silly. company, for instance. <laughs> and many of these film, uh, you know, uh, film or painting or music or dance, any of this form uh, 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 is, is very pure. It depends. You see, if you look at music, there <laughs> classical music, there is, there is uh, semi-classical, 
There is uh, 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 what you call it, cinema Filmy. music, the popular mm -hmm. music, etc. Likewise, in every field of art, there are different gradations, and each one is good in their own place. So it depends what kind of a path you choose in your life. Uh, Jatinda, can you be a non-conformist in today's world? Can you be a non-conformist and yet succeed? Is there a pressure to to follow the yeah. herd in a way? Yeah. Whether in my request in... is, yeah, yeah. My request is, my request is, let's not look at life as black and white. It's hmm. not to confirm or not to confirm. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I have no political lineage. But I have Leaning, some conviction that if you cut a tree, if you hit an animal, if you are rude and cruel to somebody, so I'm more concerned about human endeavor. On the other hand, Nandita, you are seen very much as a political person. You know, even when you right. made a film like Firak about the 2002 Gujarat riots, uh, in, in many of your other uh, uh, cinematic endeavors, you are seen as a political person. Is that a difference that your father is talking about human endeavor as an artist? I don't uh, think so. Right. I don't think so. No. Okay, I, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, Anita. So, Baba, I mean, even to him, I'm saying this. <laughs> so, when I grew up, you know, I don't my, think it's political. Okay. But, but, but I think There's we have different definitions. Commitment. Yeah, but human commitment. I think today the word political has become, has different meaning than what maybe my father or that generation sometimes understands exactly. as. You know, and, and when I grew up, my That's parents right. weren't right. into any isms. I wasn't taught feminism or even for that matter, humanism or secularism. It was just more a way of life. My parents were extremely inclusive. I've met all kinds of people growing up. You know, they had friends in, from every religion, caste, color, creed, whatever. There was no judgment on that. Uh, my father, I remember, would clean the house and then... It, because he loves cleaning also. So he would clean it and then he would go out of the gate and clean the road, like outside of the house. People would tease me that your father was cleaning the outside or if there were guests at home, he would start, you know, uh, helping the help with some uh, clothes washing. In fact, I feel fortunate that I, my understanding of polit politics doesn't come from theory or big words, uh, but actually comes from just being in a household that was liberal, that allowed questioning, that was, you know, that spoke its mind, that uh, just was so inclusive. So I think... So, so you're saying the isms, are you saying the isms have come, uh, the isms are much more contemporary? Uh, you no, know, I'm just saying that the isms came, I'm not saying it's contemporary, I'm saying isms existed even then, but isms came to my life no, later. No, ism, you so take taking sides. Mm -hmm. No, but taking sides, I think, is important. I think what you mean, Baba, by taking sides is different. Today's connotation of taking yeah. sides means taking a stand, saying this is wrong. If somebody is killing someone in the name of religion, caste, color, creed, is wrong. What That's you right. call being That's humane, right. but what you yeah. call being humane, I mean, actually being liberal or being secular or being... Feministic, all this should be a natural being. I, I just wonder, therefore, Nandita, how much did your father influence you, or was it the family in which you were? Because your parents separated when you were young, when you were seven. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did that scar you in some way, or did the relationships change? Well, I think anybody's childhood is bound to impact. I mean, there's enough psychological evidence that your childhood impacts you. So I'm sure it must have, you know scarred me in some ways but it also must have given me just the childhood itself the fact that you don't analyze not only it. You about don't this. Analyze no 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 i think there's nothing wrong in analyzing and looking back although i would not know every aspect of me how i mean i don't know if i can trace it back to everything but the childhood was also going with my parents or going with my father to all these artists homes where you know i would meet musicians and dancers and painters and photographers. My childhood also meant that I would be sitting in wings and Kumar Gandhar would be singing and my father would say, now keep yeah, quiet Dom and Morais, listen to him rehearse. Dom Morais and Leela Naidu. Morais would, yeah, Dom Morais and Leela Naidu and Dom wow. Morais would carry me in his shoulder even when he was slightly drunk and he would say, no, I'm not going to drop Nitli, you know, as he used to call me 
or you know going into Raghu Ankur Rai's uh, black. You know, uh, he was that? he was Dandita's godfather. He was Dandita's godfather. Yeah, Don so Ankur was my. So you know, the so childhood was all of that. No, as well. but you see, uh, uh, I have been a loda, and Nandita has been a loda in her journey in her own work. I have never interfered in her work. She did geography. No, when she was in Sadar Patel School, both my kids used to push my Morris Minor, 1949, mm. and it has a card number DLF 29. Okay. <laughs> we don't need to know that. <laughs> we laugh, and um, and they used to push the car because the battery was weak, and I used to oh. drop the bed. Sada Patel Vidyalaya. Baba, I have a, a different memory. At one time. I want to. I want to interrupt, okay. Baba. I have a yeah, different what is, memory. Yeah. What is my your memory? memory please, my please. memory is that I would dread that my father, out of his great love, wanted to drop me to school, and it was like exam days, and he would insist on dropping me in that Morris Minor that wouldn't move. So we would sit in the car. And there would be all these people from the neighborhood had to push the car, and then my I would be all agitated, and my father would say, "Say right. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti." <laughs> so we didn't grow up with any religion, we didn't have any deity, but the oh, one thing he would tell me, "Say Om Shanti, Shanti," when I would be all agitated, and I would. So are you are, are you shanti, both shanti. atheists? <laughs> are you both atheists? Don't start any isms, Rajdeep. These are bad. No words. isms, atheist. With I'm not saying atheism. No, are you both atheists? Even, well, we believe no, in humanity. No, I respect all religion. Hello, hello. Yeah, we respect all religion. Yes, yes, Otherwise, I yeah, respect, respect all, all religion. religion. Okay, let's take a break at this point. When we return, just a little bit more with Nandita Das and Jatin Das. You've got creativity. Welcome back. You're with India Today, India Tomorrow. And with us is a creative powerhouse of Nandita Das and Jatin Das on this special show. How do you remain pure, Jatinda? How how do you retain the purity of your art? No, Radhip, Radhip, yes, Radhip. I'm requesting you. I'm cautioning you. Let's not use extreme words. Okay. And nothing can be very pure. No color. Yeah, it's can the be loss of pure. nuance in our lives. You know. Yeah. Uh, if I if I can be very pure, then I'll become Jesus Christ. I, yes. You know, <laughs> I have all the I have all the shortcomings of a human being. Of course, I have no question. All the shortcomings of a human being. We all being. are fallible. You know, so this purity, but but as a human being, as much possible, if we can retain the purity. Is your sort of career an extension of those early days from street theatre? Then you do a master's in social work. Then you enter That's cinema right. through fire. Then you do films like Firak and Manto. Then you sort of take up. A campaign like Dark is beautiful. Make it sort of, you know, if I may be allowed to try and mainstream it that to whatever extent possible. Correct. Am I to correct. understand that it's a social commitment yeah. uh, that drives I mean, I, you in a way freedom all these? That's right. That's right. I think so. I that's think right. it does. That's and even right. my art, I always see it as a means to an end, and mm -hmm. not as an end in itself. And I think yeah. uh, that kind of attitude, even though my father may not be directly in the social work space, but you know, not only by donating his works for various causes, but for instance, I remember when his exhibitions, whether he's his carpenters, his painters, everyone who's putting up, they will all eat together. They will all sit on the ground and my father would eat with all of them. You know, when you grow up just seeing that kind of an egalitarian attitude without like, again, coming back to without any isms and without calling it any name, you just imbibe it, I think, and and for that I'm very grateful that that's the childhood I had. But but to that extent, uh, has it has it had an impact? You think on the wider world? For example, your campaign that you uh, that you ran, the Dark is Beautiful campaign. Now you've got yeah. Hindustan Lever finally withdrawing <laughs> fair and lovely green. Well, so a little, bit of tokenism, you, though. <laughs> you you see it as tokenism, but I'm just wondering whether it's important to sort of have that impact on a wider world that. You know, when you do your cinema, when you do your uh, uh, public service advertisements, is it important to impact the maximum number of people? Well, of course, you want to impact the maximum number of people, but that's not what is guiding you. Because otherwise, one would have been more commercial and mainstream because then you become more marketable. The more marketable you are, the more visible you are, the more you reach. You know, then I wouldn't have done the films I have done in 10 different languages because right. they are seen as regional films. And this was before the digital world came in. So a Malayalam film would be seen only in Kerala or a Bengali film is seen in you know, Bengal. 
but you're you're more driven by the stories you want to tell and of right. course within that you want to reach out to as many you can but that is not the guiding force because just just because somebody reaches 10 million because people because of commitment because of concern that is yeah. good yeah, yeah, i think you have to have a basic human concern and you know you need to be troubled by it i think we all are troubled by everything that's happening around us and in some ways that is guiding our work and our life and i think both for my father and me in that sense our life and work are not that's separate right. that's right there is no binary in that I, you know I, as we sort of look ahead is that for you what is going to be a motivating force in the future also the journey itself if i were to I ask think it you it always you know, has i think it well, always you know, what's has your next been. you know the kind of cinema that you would like to do next is that something again to be driven purely by your totally. instincts at that moment absolutely i think like my father i'm very impulsive instinctive and completely a journey person you know not knowing where you what is it for you, that's why i've done varied things because i'm not trying to do something for something you do it because in the moment you think this is what i want to do i just made a yeah, short because film because i you know i just heard you done a short film during the lockdown about yeah. domestic violence on mobile yes on my phone just this phone <laughs> a full film a full Without film a camera person well it's a 7 minute film do watch it it's called listen to her it's on youtube and it's open source i didn't even keep the copyright for it and so the why idea you... was yes but just to respond to what is happening around us i mean we sitting in our homes you know we can't possibly do like creatively at least respond to what's happening to the migrant workers the daily wages and those images are haunting but even stay home stay safe the irony of it is shouldn't be lost on us because there are many women and children who are locked in with their perpetrators and the figures have really increased during the lockdown not that domestic violence didn't exist before and will not exist after but in these times it has kind of really increased so i just wanted to respond to that and uh, yeah i just did it with my phone and it was a very impulsive decision seldom can you respond impulsively in a film because there's too much that goes into it but sure. i made this film uh, it's a short film and i just put it and i think it did trigger a lot of conversation around it which is why we do the films that we do what's the one thing nandita that you dislike about jatindas i mean i have a couple i do like one would be tough <laughs> <laughs> of course one is that i wish he would eat before 9 pm <laughs> you know i mean he leads a very unhealthy life touch wood he's otherwise healthy and i think he's healthy because he doesn't keep any grudges in his mind the other thing i would want him to change is to really focus on his work and the art center he's building in odisha because he cares and you know gets excited like a child about 500 things every day he's thinking of a new project and uh, and he dislikes when we say come on at this time like he doesn't want to feel 78 why can't i think of 20 projects today and we want to in, i'm guilty of trying to make him more focused and taking him away from being a journey person that he intrinsically is and something i admire so there is a contradiction yeah. there yeah. i know i've given I a very confusing can answer yeah. now? now you can interrupt and tell me what is it about your daughter that you can don't I? like she has got all my wrong things that is outspoken <laughs> uh, you know she has got all my negative qualities that is outspoken impromptu you know Impulsive. outburst these are these are these are i have been told by many people to to hold back you know, been told to I've hold never back i've held back in my life with anything but yeah hold back when it's not necessary you know <laughs> so let me therefore let me therefore so ask you nandita and in in conclusion uh you know uh Do you still see yourself as Jatin Das's daughter, or do you see yourself as Nandita Das? And what is it about being his daughter that you still like the most? No, no, she has I her am, own. I think I am. No, I am his standing, daughter. Not just but my I daughter. Am, no, but I yes. am your daughter, and I'm neither so. proud or ashamed. I am your daughter. I'm very happy. I'm your daughter, actually. And, yeah, uh, that's right. I, you know, like and like you, I don't yeah. think about myself. I'm not busy. trying to create an identity of my own or without him or for him you know it is just the reality of things and because he's my father obviously he's going to i'm going to be impacted by his value system by the things that he does even colors right the colors that you grow up with 
we never were synthetic because around us there was always cotton or silk or natural fiber so it's not it's not a conscious thing you are bound to imbibe your good and bad of your parents so yeah so i'm myself and i'm also his daughter and 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 you're happy to be outspoken like him absolutely sometimes when he tells me to hold back i i think yeah. not as a protective father i tell him i said well you've taught me all the wrong things now it's too late ah now it's too late well it's been wonderful talking to two of you and i'm glad that Thank we could you. bring you two together in covid times yes. i wish Thank that you, the two of you meet sooner rather than later you've Thank got you. to bridge this delhi mumbai divide yeah. it's absolutely. life is a journey is what i have learned today and yeah. i think that's the way you stay young keep working treat life as a journey live in the yeah. moment that's the secret of jatin das and nandita das's yeah. success formula thank you very much for joining me on india today india tomorrow thank you thank, thank you. you thank and you thanks for watching thank you hi everyone priti choudhury here hope you like this video for latest news and analysis like and subscribe to the india today youtube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated thank you for watching